We're going to take a look at Britain's longest reigning monarchs, each of their jubilees, and as a bonus, let's just see how they might have looked in real life. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Mortal Faces, I take portraits and transform them to see how individuals we read about might have looked in real life. But today in this video, we are going to go through this timeline of British monarchs meeting their jubilee milestones. So let's get started. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more historical recreations. And let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. Since the year 1000, there have been nine English monarchs who have achieved the 25-year reign. However, silver jubilees weren't celebrated, nor really a concept in England, until King George V in 1935. A jubilee for most of history until the late 19th and 20th century was seen as a 50-year celebration. So for these upcoming silver jubilees, when I say they celebrated it, I don't necessarily mean literally. So let's start at the beginning, in order. We have King Ethelred II, whose Silver Jubilee was in 1003. Also known as the Unready King, he came to the throne at the age of 12 in 978, and his reign ended in 1016. He was known for expanding England's population, trade and wealth, and really defending it against the Danish. He died about 50 years old in 1016. His 38 years on the throne wouldn't be surpassed until Henry III in 1266, over 250 years later. The next king for a silver jubilee was Henry I in 1125. He reigned for 35 years. He was the fourth son of William the Conqueror and succeeded the throne at the age of 38, after his older brother William II died from a hunting accident. He was a harsh and effective ruler, manipulating the barons rather than the barons manipulating him. He had two kids, a son and a daughter. His only son unfortunately died in the famous white ship disaster, which sunk many nobles in 1120, so he was succeeded by his nephew Stephen. However, this still led to a civil war and a succession crisis called the Anarchy. He died about 66, 67 years old in 1135. Our third king is the grandchild of Henry I. His name was Henry II. He celebrated his jubilee in 1179 and would live a total of 34 years on the throne. As the child of Henry I's only daughter and the Count of Anjou, it made him the first king of the House of Plantagenet, which ruled England for centuries to come. He succeeded King Stephen when he was 17. As mentioned, there was a civil war called the Anarchy, and that had come to a close. So Henry's reign was about re-establishing royal authority, dismantling castles, and increasing revenue. He married the famous Eleanor of Aquitaine and died aged 56 in 1189. Our first golden jubilee arises next with Henry III. Henry III celebrated 50 years on the throne in 1266 and would continue reigning for six more years, dying in 1272 when he was 65. He got the throne when he was nine years old and had an increasingly unpopular rule. The Magna Carta was signed by his predecessor, which limited the power of the barons, and he ruled England more autocratically than previous monarchs who governed through ministers. As a result, he traveled less, investing more in his palaces and castles, and he was also very religious, donating a lot to the church, but also taking a lot from the Jews, eventually attempting to segregate them entirely with a statute of Jewry. We won't see another golden jubilee for another 109 years. We have very little idea of how Henry III marked his 50 years in 1266, but he was in the middle of a civil war and had spent a sizable chunk of the previous two years imprisoned, so it was unlikely he opted for anything big. Following him, Edward I celebrated his Silver Jubilee in 1297. He reigned for 34 years. He was the son of Henry III and got the throne in 1272 when he was 33. He would die in 1307, aged 68. Edward's accomplishments included restoring royal authority, something his forefathers started, establishing parliament as a permanent institution, made the tax system more functional, and reformed law through statutes. But he also didn't like the Jews like his father and tried to expel them from England. He was a tall and temperamental man, and his reign can be summed up as... When he left the throne to his son, he left an ongoing war with Scotland and many financial and political problems. Edward's grandson would become Edward III, and he would get the second Golden Jubilee in 1376. Edward III got the throne when he was 14 in 1327 and would die in 1377, aged 64. Edward III was the big ancestor in my video on Elizabeth II's family tree. So he was the common ancestor to many of the next kings and queens of England. He transformed England into one of the most formidable military powers in Europe. 
and from what's known about his character, he could be impulsive and temperamental, but at the same time he was known for his clemency. His favorite pursuit was the art of war and was one of the greatest generals in English history. However, he is accused of endowing his youngest sons too liberally, promoting the dynastic strife accumulating in the upcoming War of the Roses. The few records that do exist reveal some surprising similarities to the present day regarding his Golden Jubilee celebration. Edward III celebrated his Golden Jubilee in 1376 with a spectacular week-long joust at London's Smithfield, beginning with a magnificent procession from the Tower of London accompanied by trumpeters. Henry VI, Elizabeth I, and Henry VIII are the next three Silver Jubilee recipients. Henry VI was the great-grandson of John of Gaunt and got the throne nine months after his father's death and remains the youngest person to have ever succeeded the English throne. He was born in 1421, got the throne in 1422, celebrated his Silver Jubilee in 1447, and died in 1471 when he was 49. Henry VI was known as being part of the War of the Roses. He was the Lancaster that got overthrown by Edward IV, his Yorkist cousins, who began the Yorkist reign, and that includes the stories of Elizabeth Woodville and Richard III. Once the War of the Roses ended, the next longest reign was from the Tudor dynasty. Henry VIII celebrated his Silver Jubilee in 1534. He was born in 1491, got the throne in 1509 when he was 18, died in 1547 when he was 55, and he would last 37 years on the throne. His daughter, Elizabeth I, would reign for 44 years. She got it in 1558 when she was 25, and she died in 1603, age 69. You can learn more about Henry VIII and Elizabeth in my separate recreations of them on my channel. After Elizabeth dies, we have the throne shift sideways to Henry VIII's sister, Margaret's line. Her great-grandchild was James VI of Scotland and First of England, which began the Stuart reign in England. He would celebrate his Golden Jubilee in 1617, as he got the Scottish throne in 1567 when he was one years old. The English throne he didn't get until 1603 when Elizabeth died, so he was on the Scottish throne for 57 years, and the English throne for 22, but technically as king, he still makes the list. I'll describe his jubilee fast for you. James VI and I spent a whopping 230,000 Scottish pounds, which is upwards of 20 million pounds today, on his jubilee tour. Upon ascending the English throne, he hasn't been back in Scotland for 14 years. Being Scotland's longest reigning monarch, he was going to go back in style, so he brought his favorite English and Scottish courtiers, all the principal officers of the royal household, one secretary of state, three bishops, eight chaplains, the king's bodyguards, and over 70 other court servants, including pages, ushers, cupbearers, trumpeters, and physicians. Naturally, all the more senior figures in the party took their own personal servants, too. More than 60 wagons were used to transport the royal luggage, while larger items were sent north by sea. Since James was determined to create the most magnificent impression, he took with him not only just his clothes, but also his furniture wall hangings, and plates to decorate the Scottish palaces during his brief stay. His train was slow and it took about two months to reach Edinburgh from London. His entire trip was expected to last six months and he would travel all around Scotland. We don't have anyone for about 160 years after this until King George II in 1752 when he celebrated his Silver Jubilee. George II got the throne in 1727 when he was 44 and he died in 1760 when he was 76. He lasted a total of 33 years on the throne. After King George II, his grandson, George III, is our final Golden Jubilee recipient who did not surpass that. He was on the throne for 59 years. He got it in 1760 when he was 22, died in 1820 when he was 81. King George III's Golden Jubilee celebrations, they were lavish and boisterous with parades, feasts, and festivities, and over 50 salutes fired from the Tower of London. There was also a Thanksgiving ceremony at St. Paul's Cathedral, followed by a royal banquet in which food and money were distributed to the poor so that everyone, even those in prison, could take part in such celebrations. The king and other members of the royal family attended a private service in Windsor and a grand fete and firework display at Frogmore. In London, the Lord Mayor and Corporation proceeded to St. Paul's Cathedral for a service of thanksgiving before holding a dinner at the Mansion House. After George III, we have Queen Victoria, who was the first monarch to celebrate her Diamond Jubilee in 1897. 
She got the throne in 1837 when she was 18 and died in 1901 when she was 81. Queen Victoria had two major jubilees. Her golden jubilee in 1887 and a diamond jubilee in 1897. The jubilee was still seen as a 50-year event, so she didn't have a silver jubilee celebration. Plus, in 1862, Prince Albert's death was still fresh for her and she wasn't in the mood. Her Golden Jubilee was a two-day affair that really reunited her back into the public eye after mourning Prince Albert for the last 20 years, and her Diamond Jubilee was even more spectacular. She had two big Thanksgiving ceremonies at St. George's Chapel and St. Paul's Cathedral with 1,000 attending the ceremony and many more watching the procession. It was also an important time in film and recording history as 40 cameramen positioned themselves to film the procession. Then it was Elizabeth II's grandfather, George V, who celebrated his Silver Jubilee in 1935. He got the throne in 1910 when he was 44, died in 1936 when he was 70. It was the first ever celebration of the British monarch's Silver Jubilee. The day was declared a public holiday, and pageants, fates, and parties were held in glorious May sunshine. The King and Queen Mary attended a service of thanksgiving at St. Paul's Cathedral before appearing on the balcony of Buckingham Palace to cheering crowds. Throughout May, the King and Queen took carriage rides through North London, including one accompanied by their granddaughters, Princess Margaret and the future Queen Elizabeth II. And finally, as we've seen, Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee just passed, marking 70 years on the throne for England's current monarch. She was fortunate enough to celebrate all the Jubilees, in 1977 was her silver, 2002 her gold, 2012 her diamond, and 2022 her platinum. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more recreations or family trees and timelines, please consider subscribing to my channel. Each of your subscriptions does help this channel grow and allows me to continue making more content for you. It's the best way to support me. Let me know in the comments who you want to see in real life. I do make a list of all your suggestions, and I will see you in the next one.